As the next step in our example, we're going to actually start doing a little bit of creation. So first, I'm going to basically just preview the wave geometry. I'm going to take those x coordinates and the new computed z coordinates and basically go through and create a bunch of points and uh, plot that as a little bit of a wave. Now, before we do that, however, I'm going to need to sort that list because, as you might remember, some of my x values aren't in the right order. I have some negative values at the end of the list, so I'm going to do a little bit of sorting, and what I'm going to do is sort the list of points by the x values using something called list sort by key. Finally, we'll go through and just create a NURBS curve to be able to visualize things. Now, once we have that curve visualized and we have the values sorted out, we can then start thinking about setting some element parameters, and I'm going to set two different parameters. I'm going to set a parameter called height, as well as a parameter called shelf depth, and that'll go through and give us the finished effect that we're looking for. So let's come on over and see how that's all implemented. So I have my list of values over here. Let's go back and use them. Okay, so I'm going to take this list of values and do a couple of different things. Okay, I want the x values. The x values we actually still have, they're over here. The y values I have too, although I can just leave them as is. I don't have to do much to them. But for the z values, that's where I want to go through and use these values that I've just computed. So let's pull those together and it'll create a list of points. Now that list is in pretty good shape, except that those negative points will sort of be at the end of the list, so I want to basically sort that list, okay? And I want to sort it by the x values. So I'm going to take those original x values and use it as a sorting key. So let's run that and see what we get. Okay, so we have those different values. I'm going to show you that wave right there so you get a sense of that. Those points on the bottom are the original window location points, and now we have our new sine wave. We can now take that sorted list and use that to create a NURBS curve just so we can do a little bit of visualization. So you can see that looks like a pretty nice sine wave right now. So now what I want to do is use those different z values as inputs for setting both the height parameters as well as the shelf parameters. So I can take that sorted list now. No, I take that back. I don't want to do the sorted list because the sorted list won't be in the right order of the different window elements. What I want to do is actually take the new values and kind of plug them in, but not sorted because the elements themselves aren't sorted, as well as I want to get all those different window elements. I'm going to have to bring them over. So they were way back up here. Let's see if I can bring that across. Okay, so if I run this, oops, let's see. Ah, I don't have any values just yet. So let's go through and take these values. Okay, and we should be able to. Have the windows adjust right now. Super! So that part's looking good. We now have our windows having the right, right height. And again, you can set some other parameters too. In this case, I also was going to set the shelf depth to match those, and I can basically pull those elements either here or go back to the original source. And if I want to have the values be just exactly the same, I can pull those across for the shelf depth parameter. Or I might put another function in there. Oh, maybe divide those by two or by three or something like that so that they have a little bit more variation in them. Okay, but that's the essence of the example. So grabbing some information about the geometry, doing a little computation to it, and then ultimately setting the parameters of some uh, rather families is a very common operation we do like with Dynamo.